Hey guys and welcome back to another eye contrast video. Today we're going to be diving into the depths of setting up the car. Whether you're not very competitive or you want to find leg racing setups, uh, you can find heaps of great setups online. I know TRL Limitless, he, his channel um, has a lot of good setups, but this is more about personalizing your setup to what you actually need out of the car to get you know, the most consistent lap times throughout a race, not just qualifying or one lap pace. Uh, it's all about trying to find a car that is suited to you in all the conditions that you'd have to experience throughout a race. Now, um, if you're a beginner and you just want to learn about the setups, this also might be a good video for you because I'll be just going over what each kind of thing does throughout the car and hopefully you can treat what um, issues you have with the car using this knowledge and then that way you can uh, enjoy your experience more with driving throughout a circuit and uh, hopefully you can set a faster lap time using this method. Uh, by all means, I do not know the most about Formula 1 cars. I'm sure there's people that have a more in-depth kind of um, knowledge about these cars and their setups than me but I'll tell you what I know and hopefully it can help you out and I'm definitely not the uh, fastest driver here either as you can see like around this track I'm only ranked 680th um, in Malaysia so I'm definitely definitely not the uh, fastest driver either but hopefully uh, my league racing experience can help you out here so starting off then aerodynamics and weight distribution are probably your most important things on the car at the moment in this stage of the game um, definitely you want to be editing these kind of features of the car the most if you're having a sh like a really prominent issue with the car whether it's understeer oversteer or the back snapping out or whatever like that uh, these are your go-to places most of the time as to what is causing the issue or where you can find the most stability through the car so traditionally the setups were somewhat close to the default setup even for league racing would have uh, either six or seven weight distribution and then for aerodynamics it was something close to the middle as well maybe six seven front wings and then uh, eight or nine rear wings in most tracks or oh, other way around sorry uh, eight um, at the front usually a little bit more at the front to get the car turned in and a little bit less at the rear because the car was pretty stable as it is with that weight distribution being around six or seven but as the setups um, progressed and uh, people found out how to make the cars faster uh, through an unorthodox way uh, people started doing this sort of thing where you have basically no front wing at all and then crank up the rear wing as much as possible and then make the for the rear for the weight distribution uh, put it as close to the rear as possible to get the car turned in still and then uh, that way you know the car's still stable in the rear and it's going to be really fast down the straights because you got no front wing basically so that's what a bunch of people have been doing lately and uh, it seems to be really working in league races so that seems to be what's uh, trending and fast at the moment so now that I've explained why people use this tactic we're going to dive into the rest of the setup and explain what you can do to change the car in uh, numerous conditions so if you're ex using this kind of setup if you're experiencing the car to be stepping out a lot more you can increase the rear wing and turn the weight distribution more towards the center of the car and that will hopefully help you out and then once you've put the weight distribution more towards the center of the car you can then start increasing the front wing only by a couple of clicks though because the front wing basically starts forcing the rear of the car to step out. I know it sounds weird, but the more front wing you put on the car, the less stable I find the rear of the car to be as the weight distribution is usually cranked up to as much as it can. And uh, it, uh, yeah, it may sound weird, but the less front wing you have using this kind of method, uh, the more stable the rear of the car is going to be. So only move it up a couple of clicks if you are able to turn the weight distribution more towards the center of the car. So in the circumstance of understeering, you can increase the front wing as much as you can to try and get the car turned in. Uh, the rear wing isn't really relevant in this circumstance, but you should try and keep it up as much as possible to keep uh, the rear of the car stable, even though it might increase the drag down the straights. Uh, the ballast, you can increase that to try and reduce the understeer as well. Uh, by doing this, you're going to help the car get turned in using your weight. As you progress through your career mode, your car is going to be better and better, especially if you increase the aerodynamics and weight distribution and whatnot. So you're definitely going to have to uh, adjust these as your car progresses and 
most likely reduce the weight distribution and but especially reduce the aerodynamics as the aerodynamics of the car becomes better and better. So one of the major problems with these new cars is dirty air when you're trying to follow the car in front of you as close as possible and you just can't stick to the to the road at all because you understeer everywhere. Well that's where these setups come in handy. Having close to no front wing means you're going to lose close to no downforce from the front. Well I know you're going to still feel it but uh, it's the best way to deal with this uh, dirty air so that way you reduce the amount of downforce taken away from the front end of the car and then that way when you go back to the weight distribution you're basically using the weight of the car to turn in rather than the downforce and uh, that will help kind of like substitute that turn in when you are following the car in front of you and uh, hopefully you can still stick to the track rather than under steering wide. So right now I feel that I've covered enough of aerodynamics and weight distribution so we're going to dive into the transmission. Now transmission lock is basically how much you want the car's uh, tires to rotate between each other before they start spinning uh, out of loss of traction. So on throttle adjustment means that as you're coming out of a hairpin say in Monza uh, you want to be as powerful coming out of that corner as, as you can. So to keep that maximum power down, you'd have the maximum amount of lock possible. But later on in the race, you maybe don't want to have that kind of power straight to the tires of the car because then they'll start spinning up and then you'll get increased tire wear. And then uh, later on in the race, that'll disadvantage you and you might get more instability at, in the rear of the car coming out of the corner uh, due to wheel spin and the car snapping. So in the race, you want to turn that down to probably about 80-ish or your personal preference of course uh, depending on the track however I like to keep mine around 60 60 ish 65 that's because I like to manage my tires being on the controller of course um, I like to manage my tires as much as possible and later on in the race when the tires are worn you'll be finding that you'll be actually getting better traction coming out of the corners as you can get to the power earlier and you don't spin up the wheels as much so uh, you can adjust this during the race, keep that in mind, so you can always use a higher lock during qualifying and then reduce it as the race goes on. Uh, however, you don't need to fiddle with off-throttle adjustment as much, uh, you can leave it around 70 and that should do the trick. So in terms of suspension geometry, we've been seeing a lot of this happen lately with the camber angle. Uh, this defines how much of the tyre is making contact with the surface of the road. So all the way to the right means that it's going to be as uh, you know on its edge as possible and uh, this will improve your grip I guess going through corners as more of the car w more of the tire surface would make contact with the road as you go through a corner as the car leans on its side but uh, this can also have a negative effect on your tire wear so if you're looking for stability uh, drag these more towards the center but if you're going for one lap pace or the track requires the the tires to have a lot of camber angle uh, such as a lot of undulation going through the corners and you need that sort of grip and uh, just long corners in general then definitely use this kind of setup with the toe it's all about responsiveness and stability usually we keep it all the way to the left or close to the left than the center but uh, definitely keep that towards the center or the left and you should be all right and then once again, I'll be going through all of this uh, for wet weather. Uh, it'll change a lot of things for um, the whole setup. So stay tuned if you're interested in wet weather setups as well. Uh, front suspension and rear suspension is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. It's about how the car is going to absorb bumps as it goes through the circuit. Uh, if you've got a bumpy circuit, then perhaps you need to have softer springs. Like if you're going to bash the curbs, then you're going to need softer springs. Uh, Rear suspension pretty much the same. In terms of anti-roll bars, this is about your initial responsiveness in contrast to actually provide good traction throughout the corner, not just the start of it. Um, it's kind of like a balance you got to try and find whether or not you want to have the car really responsive as you enter a corner or you want to have a lot of traction as you go throughout the corner. Uh, this is really high balance to find through Malaysia. So um, it might take some fiddling with before you find something that you like or you might stick with somebody else's setup. Uh, usually if you find someone else's setup you don't have to tamper with the suspension too much but uh, 
definitely have a look at the aerodynamics and the weight distribution for stability. And uh, if you're running firm anti-roll bars, that's going to give you excessive tire wear, so just be aware of that. Uh, softer ones will help you cope with that sort of thing. Uh, in terms of ride height, if you've got a really undulating circuit that's bumpy or you're going to hit the curves a lot, uh, you might want to increase the front ride height a fair bit, but uh, the rear ride height is probably going to stick around 5 or lower. Uh, you want to keep that as low as possible because it's going to create excessive drag down the straight. Uh, same with front ride height, you want to try and keep it as low as possible. If you can manage to keep it uh, you know, comfortably on the track, using a lower ride height then definitely use a lower ride height but for consistency you're probably going to want to increase that ride height until you're comfortable with it. Brakes is more about personal preference if you want to be really late on the brakes but have more of a risk of locking up or pinching a brake then you are probably going to want to run a higher brake pressure or if you want to go for more consistent less tire wear less chance of locking up your brakes um, but you'll have to be slower through the corner I guess as you brake earlier uh, then reduce that brake pressure towards the center but I usually run around 70 ish 75 um, up to 80 percent brake pressure and then run about 56 percent on the front brake bias as I like to have it more towards the rear of the car but yeah in terms of brake pressure you can probably run all the way up to 82 percent that I that's probably as far as I'd go maybe around Monza or something like that but uh the brakes is largely about your preference with tire pressure people don't usually fiddle around with this too much as they keep the front tire pressure pretty much the same uh, rear tire pressure usually down one or two clicks and uh, well we've already gone over weight distribution so let's dive into what I'd change in a wet weather setup so I'd really balance out these aerodynamics a lot more so more towards the higher end as well uh, I'm probably somewhere around eight or nine maybe ten if you especially around the rear if you want to keep the car stable in terms of transmission I'd reduce uh, the on throttle as much as possible all the way down to 50 percent and perhaps keep on throttle around 70 maybe you can decrease that down to 60 um, totally up to you in terms of suspension geometry i drag the camber angle all the way to the center um, perhaps the toe all the way to the middle as well just to keep it nice and stable throughout the corner and then that way you got most of the uh, tire surface making contact with the road and then that way you can get the most grip and uh, with leg racing, I don't usually tamper with the front suspension and usually we have uh, dry qualifying and wet races so I don't really change the suspension too much if it becomes wet during the race. So um, I usually leave that as it is although you can adjust this if you feel it necessary. Uh, with the brakes, uh, you might want to in uh, decrease the brake pressure a little bit. Uh, that'll help you brake uh, for corners and prevent that issue of locking up. Once again, I don't usually get the opportunity to change the tire pressure, so I usually leave it at the same, although you might want to change it for the wet as well. Weight distribution is going to be a big one. You want to change that all the way down to 6. That's as probably the most stable as you're going to get. Maybe even 5, as uh, you might get more stability. Um, totally up to you, but definitely do not run high uh, ballast towards the rear, as that will make the car absolutely step out in the wet especially in the rear of the car so um, definitely reduce your ballast for the wet and increase the aerodynamics to help compensate for that and you should be okay so yeah once again a few little neat tricks um, if you're picking up a setup on the time trial and you just want to copy and paste it make sure you copy one if you're using no assist and copy a person that's using no assists uh, if you're using assist then copy a person that uses assist or whatever um, but if you're copying a person that uses assist and uh, you're not using assist then you're probably going to have to change down the brake pressure if they're using APS etc. Uh, just be aware of that because not every setup works for everyone. Be sure to personalize your setups to what you actually need from the car even if you copy a setup. Um, it may be good for one lap pace but throughout the race uh, this is what I did for this setup. I actually changed it from 8 or 9 wings to 10. The, the original setup was 8 or 9 and then yeah I had to increase the rear wing to get that stability for the race I might have been a bit slower down the straights but uh, definitely needed that stability through the corners because the weight distribution was at 10 
But yeah, I cannot stress enough to try out a bunch of setups in time trial at least. If not, then try and do it in some Grand Prix mode races in the Mercedes as that's what the online car is based on. Or even just go ahead and use online uh, lobbies to practice in or practice lobbies online. And uh, hopefully you can find the perfect setup. Try a bunch of different ones. I found that the one setup never works for everyone. Some people like more pointed cars, understeery cars. Uh, some people are using controllers. Some people are using wheels. Some people are even using assists. You know, it's completely different for everyone. And uh, it's totally up to their personal preference. So it means that you're going to have to find your personal preference as well. And then that should hopefully improve your lap times as well throughout the race. Uh, this is where also having friends that are in the same league as you using the same you know sort of assist or controller or wheel as you um, you might want to try out their setups because they will definitely be practicing in time trial at least and I uh, see if that works for you and uh, if not then just change it around a bit so uh, that's been this video if you liked it be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more new content uh, let me know what you want to see in the next video and I'll see you all in a brand new one thanks for watching <laughs>